Hi guys, so today we're doing something a little bit different. In the spirit of just a girl, female empowerment and women being their own bosses, I thought it would be quite fun to go through some old wives rules. I guess. My management have kindly Amazon primed a book to me. It is called The Good Wife Guide, 19 Rules for Keeping a Happy Husband. Be all the wife he needs. Ah, this is gonna be a fun time. I am quite an independent woman. I set up my own business at 16 and went self-employed. I moved out of my parents' house at 19 without going to uni. I've lived by myself in London for three years. I'm not here to shove my feminist opinions in your face. I think it's just fun to make light of how things used to be, how far we have come. We still have a huge way to go when it comes to gender equality. Obviously you guys know that's what Just A Girl is about, but we're just here to poke fun. So on the back it says, Ladies Homemaker Monthly was a preeminent homemaker's journal at the turn of the last century. Its editors strongly advocated the temperance movement and old fashioned family values. Their most famous adage, ad adage? <laughs> adage, adage, adage. Contract taste, contact tasting, t testing, tracing, forgive me, contract, contract, contact tracing, contract taste, contact tasting, t testing. Was you can judge a good woman by how many well-dressed children she has and the contentment of her husband. Give me a damn break. I've literally never read this book before. My management chose it. These are my initial reactions. Um, Saddling kids. Okay, rule number one, a wife's duty. A man's home is his castle, and as such, he ought to be treated like a king. When he returns home from a demanding... <laughs> oh my god. When he returns home from a demanding eight hours on the job, or more, oh, god forbid, he rightfully deserves a bit of pampering. It's every wife's responsibility to dote upon her hard-working spouse to show that he is truly appreciated. I mean, if you want egg and chips after work, like, fine. But I'm not clipping your toenails. Okay, rule number two, recipe for success. Just as it would be unthinkable to serve... <laughs> God bless my future husband, because this is getting me riled up. Just as it would be unthinkable to serve frozen TV dinners or reheated leftovers to an honoured guest, these offerings should not be considered acceptable dinner for the man you adore. I mean, I can't cook, so my future boyfriend is getting microwavable spag bowl. Give him a hearty home-cooked meal, one that's prepared from scratch and seasoned with love. The hours you spend over a hot stove will be repaid in full when he eagerly asks for seconds. <laughs> I mean... Am I allowed seconds? Rule four, cleanliness. Make sure the house is spotless before he's due to arrive home. Give the furniture a quick dusting and make sure all unsightly laundry and ironing has been put away. Unsightly? Your house should be sparkling by the time he sets foot in it. When, when is it my turn? What do I get? Do I just get like an hour on a Saturday afternoon? Maybe he brings me a cup of tea? Perhaps a hobnob? Like, does he look me in the eye? Rule number five, a happy homecoming. Oh my Christ. Oh my God. Roll out the red carpet, ladies and gentlemen. When your husband walks through the front door, take his coat. <laughs> take his coat and guide him to his favorite easy chair. Pissed off. Offer him the evening newspaper, his slippers, and a dry martini to take the edge off. Shit a break. If he appears fatigued or cranky from his traffic-laden commute, a relaxing foot rub. Nah, nah, I ain't going anywhere near anyone's trotters. A relaxing foot rub or shoulder massage may be in order. He can piss right off. You ain't getting that from me, Petal. Rule number six, greet him with a smile. Mm, resting bitch face, no thanks. Next question. <laughs> See ya. Rule number eight, at the dinner table, anticipate your spouse's needs by refilling his plate before he asks. When it comes to your own plate, remember that less is more. Oh my god, sometimes I have thirds. Certainly, the moist 
Yep. The moist layer cake with buttercream frosting you baked this morning. This morning, I don't get up before 12. The cake with buttercream frosting you baked this morning looks appetising, but it won't do your waistline any favours. He's about to get a plus size punch from a plus size gal. Run number nine. Honey, how was your day? No matter how trying your own day may have been, don't burden him with your trivial woes. Get a f***ing grip. He's had to deal with enough aggravations at work and he depends on you to be his res respite. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, from such drudgery. If he chooses to vent about his day, on the other hand, it's your job to lend a caring, sympathetic ear off. I wonder if there's genuinely still people that think this is how it should go down. This ain't up my street. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. Rule number 10, be witty and conversant. I can't read. With a table full of dirty dishes waiting to be scoured and stacked, I ain't touching them. Lift a finger, I've waited on you all day. With a table full of dirty dishes waiting to be scoured and stacked, your day's work has hardly ended. But that's no excuse for failing to be a lively companion. <laughs> I'm so tired just reading it. Engage your husband in stimulating conversation, ranging from news of the day. Okay, so while I'm baking a cake, and I'm cooking, and I'm cleaning, and I'm getting rid of the unsightly laundry. I've got to listen to the news as well, and pay attention to the shit that's going on in the world. And have a smile on my face. That's already so hard for me. Yeah, but there's people that are dying. But don't appear too opinionated or knowledgeable. Well, <laughs> There's a fat chance of me being knowledgeable about the news. A good wife defers to her husband on all points, intellectual or otherwise. Sure. Rule number 13, hush little children. Oh my God, I forgot we had children. I don't have time for children. I'm baking cakes and putting laundry away and giving foot rubs. Children are a blessing. But there can be a tremendous strain on their father's... <laughs> but they can be a tremendous strain on their father's frazzled nerves. Encourage your children to use their quiet voices when daddy comes home and try to minimise ram rambunctious behaviour. What does that mean? Rambunctious. uncontrollably exuberant, boisterous. I'm the one that's gonna be boisterous. Also, if I've got to look after the children in the house all day, he can at least play Uno with them when he gets home. Number 14, a mother's day never ends. See, that sounds like a nice thing, but I know it's not gonna be. Once dinner ends and the kitchen has been cleaned, by me, or she or we darlings upstairs for bath and bedtime, your spouse will be grateful for a bit of solitude as you tend to the little ones in an efficient, orderly fashion. How about you just wrap up? Rule number 15, spread gladness, not badness. But I'm a bad bitch. When possible, try to spare your husband from the nuisance of life's little troubles. Now is not the time to present him with a stack of bills or the fact that little Jimmy flunked his spelling test. Well, no, Jimmy can sort himself out, but the stack of bills, What's mine is yours. If you can handle such crises without having to needlessly bother your husband. Needlessly bother? What happened to for richer, for poorer? If I'm in debt, you're in debt. Rule 16, sing his praises. No! His ego will appreciate the boost. I don't think he needs a f***ing ego boost at this point. I'm giving him foot rubs. Rule number 17, all in a day's work. A man's needs are simple and his requests are few. Is this a joke? Don't expect special acknowledgement or words of praise for your efforts. It's your role to support him and make him feel special, not the other way around. Oh no. Rule number 18, between the sheets. When your darling man suggests that you slip into something a little more comfortable, he's not referring to your ankle length flannel nightgown. Entice him into the bedroom by foregoing your cold cream and curlers in favor of a seductive negligee. 
Be a tantalizing temptress in those few short minutes before your husband falls asleep. Short minutes. <laughs> he can't even do that. Once he's out like a light, you can steal a few more homework minutes. Rolling out the dough for tomorrow morning's light and flaky Danish. I don't think. I don't think. Then it's off to bed for you too. Well, thank God. After all, you'll have to rise early to make sure he awakes to the smell of percolating coffee. I'll shove his bloody flaky Danish up his... Rule number 19, a job well done. At the end of each day, survey your home and family and ask yourself one important question. Have I inspired domestic tranquility? I'm gonna ask myself that every day now. With a little extra elbow grease and a can-do attitude, you too can answer each and every day with a resounding yes. I think we can all agree that times have moved on. Pray for my future husband. Thank you if you made it this far. Like I said, this is just a little bit of fun. Keep streaming, Just A Girl. Thank you so much for the support on the single and the EP. It has meant the entire world to me. Give us a like and a comment. And yeah, thank you so much. I love you all. Don't forget to make a flaky Danish.